Welcome to another edition and episode of The Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio along with my beautiful co-hosts Elena Rodriguez and Janet Morana. And I love this topic because it involves one of my, a saying from my favorite saint of all time, St. Teresa of Avila, whom I was named after. And you know this because you've been to Avila, Elena. And Janet, this is something I think that you can relate to too because you uh, were a stay-at-home mom for a while right. and, and did a lot of things out of the house. But this is really, when we come right down to it, this episode is going to be about finding God in the everyday. And, and I want to start out by reading the quote from St. Teresa of Avila. She says, God walks among the pots and the pans. Don't think that if you had a great deal of time, you would spend more of it in prayer. Get rid of that idea, she says. God gives more in a moment than in a long period of time, for his actions are not measured by time at all. Know that even when you are in the kitchen, our Lord is moving among the pots and the pans. I love yeah, that. Anybody great. can relate Speaks to it. If, so if, if we have you. children at home yeah. or if we're adults and we're an empty nester and sometimes we don't have time to pray and we're going about our, our business and we forget that God is everywhere and we can tap into that. And every moment you can turn into prayer as simple as waking up before your feet even touch the floor, offer up everything that you're going to do that day as a prayer. Right. You might be very busy. You might say, oh, my, please, Lord, help me because I have so much to do on a day like today. I don't even have a minute to even stop and breathe. Right. Well, your work is prayer. <laughs> and so you offer it up for the intentions that are in the, in the deepest of your heart. At the beginning of the day, Lord, I offered up this day for X, Y, and Z intentions. And then everything you do, all that rush, all that stress, all that worry and concern, what am I going to do to be able to get all this done today? And I have to get it done today. All that turns into prayer, and then the Lord helps you. And I always like to ask the intercession of our most blessed mother because she somehow well, we have the Madonna in the kitchen time. right there, which and is that, a right. good representation. It's so of, emblematic right. for mm -hmm. this particular show and all of our shows here at the Catholic View for Women. Our, our Lady in the house with a broom to clean the soul, to clean the house with the with the kettle to to nurture us. And, but also spiritually nurture us, and with the keys, the keys to the kingdom, and also That's the right. keys to keep the house safe and protected. And that is our function as, as women and our role models, our feminine role models in our, in our homes. That's right. Well, when you're saying, you know, start the day, when you think about it, I mean, I can relate to this, that uh, especially for moms who get up in the middle of the night with a baby, <laughs> you know, the baby cries, or, you're, or even when your alarm w rings off to get up for work, like you're saying, Elena, before you get out of bed, well, when the alarm goes off or the baby's crying, just say, well, Lord, okay, good morning. Thank you for letting me wake up right now and deal with you know, my day. I mean, sometimes it doesn't even have to be a whole prayer. It could just be, I think what we don't do enough is, is talk to God throughout the day. Right. We're thinking it has to be a formalized prayer all the time. Where's my Magnificat? Let me get my rosaries. But some people are literally so busy with so many children to take care of and so many responsibilities that you have to be talking to God throughout the day. So, Lord, okay, good morning. You let me wake up again. I do that sometimes. I say, okay, God, I got another day. Thank you. You know, and then get into the, the routine in the morning. Uh, and um, I relate also to the whole story of, of Martha and Mary because I tend, I travel so much, but when I'm home, I like to be Martha. I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> I love to cook and bake for, for my friends and family. Okay, and, and I just want that. to say on international television, she makes the best cookies. She oh. makes the best Italian cookies, we're and she's not even Italian. My uh, house. Amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Okay? Well, I know, you know, talking about the cookies, you know, okay, everybody got to know this. I, I make panoli cookies. I make the, what's called for the Italians out there. Spigliadels. Uh, no, cucciadada. Oh, no, I don't make the spigliadels. I don't make spigliadels. Right. That's yeah. a pastry. I make the cucciadada cookies. What's yeah. for the fig oh. cookies? I make the lemon drop cookies. And, of course, like I said, mm. the panoli cookies. Mm. And I know when I send them to Teresa and uh, for her dom and her mom, Rosie, yes, Rosie. We're all 100% Italian, we fight over the cookies. That's right. A little bit. They do. And yeah. Dominic hides difference. them in the freezer. He, so does, he, has he hides them in the freezer. <laughs> no, Why but you want them in the freezer. Because he wants them all to himself. Right. Oh, but the point goodness. is, <laughs> right. okay, the point here, ladies and gentlemen, is it's not just about the cookies. It's when making the cookies, I, can, I should be, and I, I have to start doing this more consciously, saying, 
Well, Lord, uh, I want you to bless all the people who are going to enjoy my Christmas cookies, you know, give them a grace to come closer to you. These are all like practical little things we can do. Your work is prayer. Right. Work can be, you know, you can make, I feel it when I get your cookies, it really just, it, it makes me feel so good because I know the work it takes. I'm not a baker. I'm, I'm much better cook. My husband, the engineer, is a baker. He's a very good baker. But because he's a deacon now, he doesn't have a lot of time to bake. So her cookies are like the best thing that comes every Christmas. It's like our greatest gift. You know what's going to happen, Teresa? I'm going to get requests now. Now, yeah. Well, you know, maybe we can raise some money for EWTN. Janet's cookies. No. Janet's cookies. No, but, but I, I love that expression of finding God in the everyday because I know that that's, that's a, a sacrifice for you. You're so busy and you take the time to make these amazing Italian cookies, which are not easy, especially the Pignoli cookies. They can be very complicated. So that's the encouragement today right. for everyone, not just the moms out there who are busy at home, but all of us. My spiritual director always said to me to offer your day up for, as, as a prayer, as offer a prayer. your show, my radio show. Doing. Up as a prayer. Yeah, right. what you're doing. Right. And talk about doing, of course. You travel a lot, and you do, and I do. You, I run all these conferences now, promoting EWTN, uh, media missionaries. Okay. Teresa and I speak at a lot of conferences and events. And so many, I know m women we hear about throughout the country, they're busy moms. They can't get to a conference sometimes. Well, recently I was uh, at the Catholic Marketing Network, uh, which is a great conference, and this lady was there who has created a very unique way. This is great. This for stay-at-home really moms to attend a conference. So let's see what uh, Tammy Kaiser has to say about stay-at-home moms. And, and finding God in the pots and the pans. Exactly. That is one of the blessings of a big family. And my children are now getting older. So, you know, the oldest is 30. So I'm, I'm sort of looking at, a, you know, at the results of those children growing up in, the, in a large family. And um, I see that my children are, are, are very generous, um, not very materialistic. I, and, and, and what a blessing that is for me as a mother to see that these children, you know, they're taking on some of those virtues of, being magnanimous and and sharing and and you know and, and and they joke a lot about you know they're that way because like at dinner they had to be you know you had to grab your food first or whatever I mean those kinds of things there's a lot of, of, of joking about what it was like to grow up in in that large sort of family I'm but really into the Mary Martha story in the Bible because as mothers I think we all struggle with that Martha aspect that we just have to get all this stuff done and we live our lives just busy and anxious, worried about many things, as Jesus criticized St. Martha. We have to get the dishes done. But who got praised in that story was Mary. And so I think as, as mothers, we've got to try to keep that balance of getting these dishes done. But yet on the other hand, we have to find Christ in that moment. We have to find Christ sitting in our living room. It may be in the face of that child. It may be in the face of our husband. Well, of course, it's in both of those situations. It's also maybe even in that task of doing the dishes that we've got to, as we're washing those dishes, um, you know, we've got to find Christ there, um, getting these dishes clean and just the, the joy of serving the family. Um, and so so that, that, that analogy and that balance between Mary and Martha, I think, is helpful for me as a mother. And, of course, always looking to, to Mary, the mother of Jesus. I started doing these women's conferences about four years ago. And I started because I saw this new trend in online with people doing conferences online. And so I thought, you know, wouldn't this be great if we could do this for Catholics and for Catholic moms in particular because... As a Catholic mom, it's very hard to get out of the house to a regular conference. I know it's great and it's wonderful to get together, and I encourage moms to do that all the time, but why not use this technology to you know, get these quality speakers and get some inspiration right there in the home of women? And so um, I said, can I do it? And i like, I don't know. I watched a bunch of YouTubes on how to do this kind of thing. And I started going to different speakers and say, hey, would you be a part of this? And people were very willing to participate. they like, this is a great idea. And so, um, and Father Frank was one of them. He was near one of those first conferences that we had. And, um, you know, people think this is a great idea, just to bring these quality speakers into the homes of these women. And, and so I put together this, this year I'm doing my fourth conference, and I have a great lineup. The theme for this year is packing the backpack. And so I'm going with the idea that you take 
you know, you only have so much time with your children. And so we want to prepare them for this journey of life that they have. So what, do you, what are you going to give your kid? What are you going to put in their backpack? And so, of course, we want to give them the faith, but what different aspects of the faith we want to give them? You know, a strong understanding of Christian marriage. I want to give them, you know, some understanding of the virtue of chastity. I want to give them some manners, um, some of the other virtues. I want to give them maybe a, a love of learning. So all these kinds of things is what we want to put in our children's backpack. And so that's what the topics are for, for this this year's conference. And so we have different speakers who are going to talk about all those different topics. And the conference will be for free. So women, um, moms can sign up online and then they get two videos a day, just like they were attending a conference, but of course they can watch them whenever they want. So if they want to fold laundry and watch a talk, they can do that. Or if they want to do their dishes and watch a different talk at any time or catch it before going to bed or, you know, whenever they get a chance to watch them. I really enjoyed that. And what I liked about it was she even used the phrase, finding God in the pots and the pans. That's and right. I don't know if you had mentioned that in the interview to her before you, no, you I take the segment, I which is really it's fun. Like, I mean, yeah. that's the Holy Spirit working. <laughs> yeah. But if you think about this, getting back to what you both were saying uh, before we, we showed that great clip of Tammy, the fact that this doctor of the church is one of the great mystic writers of all time, St. Teresa of Avila, is, is talking to her sister, saying very simply, you need to find God in the pots and the pans. Now, she's not someone who's saying don't do the form formula prayers. No, of course not. Because she had, I mean, this great uh, practice of going inward, and that's where Interior Castle comes from, when you move from, from segment to segment to get into this mansion where you're in the room with God, which is this whole idea of getting closer to God through, in many ways, formalized prayer as well. But that the practical, the beauty of just being with God and talking to Him in your everyday task can be so wonderful. We come back, we have a, a fun thing we're going to talk about and talk about family. We're going to give you an idea to get closer to your family in a very unique way. Another way kind of of finding God in the pots and the pans and in some very interesting card games. Who knew? We'll be right back. You know, uh, people might be wondering about uh, Tammy Kaiser's uh, conference, like, oh, how do we find out about the conference? Well, first of all, Tammy does them about once a year, usually in the fall, and you go to her website, uh, catholicmosaic.com, and she'll have all the information about when is the next uh, online conference. And she always gets, like she said, she had Father Pavone one time and others. Uh, maybe she'll get some of us on <laughs> from the Catholic View. But she has great speakers, and what's great about it um, is that you can do the conference at your own pace. This is not like, yes, this is not like, oh, it's a Skype thing. I got to get on now at this time to watch it. No, it's that you get a special login and it's free. She doesn't charge for it. It's free, you know, to come onto this conference. And then you get all the login passwords and then you can just attend the speakers as you go. Th that's what I do. I do webinars. I don't, I don't do it video-wise. I know she, she incorporates video with the guests, but we do a, uh, a webinar once a month and we do a different topic. Yeah. And I do it through one of my publishers, and it's a great way because because you you don't have to listen, as you said, Janet, live. You register; they're free, and you can go back anytime and right. watch them. You can watch them again because right. you may be, as she suggested, folding clothes, doing laundry, doing the dishes. Right. Well, there might be some distraction. You may want to listen to it a second time right. and get even more out of it, refresh your mind, or maybe share it with a friend and invite over. And most friend. most of these people that do the conferences, you know, for these kind of online things like Tammy's, they give resources that are online there too. So so it's not just listening to that talk, but then going deeper because they always provide, like we do, extra resources to take it to a next step. So I think it's marvelous and we just need to keep spreading the word about there's so many more online opportunities for those that just can't. I, mean, I can think about when my kids were little, you told me to go to a conference, I tell you, you lost your mind. I mean, <laughs> I know, because I mean, I had, uh, you know, my, my twins were only two. Well, yeah, two, twins and, and I had my the, oldest yeah. daughter and then two years later, 23 months later, I had my twins. I did not no leave the time. house. I mean, we didn't even go on like a big family vacation until at least I think the, the twins were uh, five and, and Jen was seven because, I mean, it was just like crazy. It was enough of an ordeal if I had to go to the mall with three, the three right. little ones, you know. So 
the idea of going to a Catholic conference for me would have been off the charts. No way. Of course, back then we didn't have the technology we have today. And I'm so happy that there are people out there with these apostolates that are using this technology to help people who are at home with their children, which is wonderful that they're, you know, at home with their mom or maybe they're busy and they're working and they can't go, can't get time off to go to the conference. So this is, I think. It's an option. It's an alternative. It's a great option. I do, I would encourage uh, moms especially, though, if they can get their husbands to give them the day off and go to a conference because even getting out of the house is oh, very, is very helpful. Hell, and you need is. that. You, you need that bonding with other women. But this is another way to bond. I mean, you can do exactly. this online and, and, and you're there with, with other women who are going through the same thing. But I just love that idea of the pots and the pans. It's such practical faith that God is there with us. And that, yes, we have beautiful formalized prayers in the Catholic faith, but we don't have to be so hard on ourselves. It, and this is not to be say that we can slack but that, oh my gosh, I didn't get my rosary done today. I'm an awful person. No, God understands that you have a busy life. As long as you right. have him on your mind and on your heart. That's what St. Teresa of, and if St. Teresa of Avila can say this, I think we can well, give ourselves a break it's once like in a while. like what we were saying all along, talk to him more. Talk right. to him throughout the day. I mean, I talk to him all, I'm like, really? Seriously? With all the stuff that's going on in the world? Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, between the church and the state, there's right. enough going on right. that we look up to God and say, come on, can I you help us really here? I know you're really large and in charge, but I'm not <laughs> getting this right now. I'm no. not understanding this. Right. So it is talking to, to, talking to God throughout talking the day. Throughout the day. Even when you're running around and maybe going to the grocery store, parking is difficult. Hail Mary. Oh, no, Full of I, grace. I, I help say us a find to, a parking I land to my parking angel. Oh, I do. I have a parking angel. Never yes. fails. Yeah. I have people sometimes in my car who don't don't believe in you know going to church and all this jazz, and I'll go. They'll go. You're never going to find a parking space, Janet. So yeah, watch this. Oh, parking angel, where are you? Janet needs a space right away. Oh, parking angel, where are you? Janet needs a space right away. Guess what? You I always space. get a space. <laughs> And then the unbelievers in the back seat are going, like, what in the what? world? What? Yeah. That works? I said, hey, listen, parking angel, whatever you want, it works. And well, I, you, you, know, you ask for intercession. I ask for intercession, yeah. and it helps. Mm -hmm. It really does. And, yeah. you know, when we're preparing these shows, I pray. I know we all pray. Yeah, yeah. When we're seeking what should the topics be, we, 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 of course, look at viewer response, what topics, but we pray about it. Who should, you know, God, who are you going to send in my path? Who am I going to interview for this this series? Who who what do people need to hear? Who is it from? Well, it's prayer, and it's the Holy Spirit. Just and the people. When you think about it, in the years we've been doing the Catholic view, right? The people that have just come into our path, right? Has it's amazing. It always floors me that, oh my gosh, that one's got a great story. Oh, what, let's get them on the Catholic view or that one, and and it's having I think the faith. To, to well, talk I think being to God, open and constantly opened. being talking to right. God in the midst of that busy day, whatever we're doing, right. and things start to come together, yeah. you can see the Holy Spirit working. So, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. I'm glad yeah. Tammy is doing those conferences. Exactly. Yeah. Well, talk about fun things. Okay, I was at the Catholic Marketing Network, and um, there was a, a, a gentleman there with a brand new thing uh, called uh, the Saint Cards, and. Um, it's a game you can play at home, and I think when we talk about put down the cell phones, family, oh, more time together, yeah. they, they, they're these adorable little cards. This is the St. Felicity and Perpetua of Carthage card, mm. and I, I actually took out my cell phone, literally. I said, okay, David, I'm never going to remember how to play this game when I get back, uh, you know, to explain to everybody. So can you please explain how to play this game? So if we take a look, I have a clip, and uh, let's hear uh, David play how to play the Saint Card game. Okay. So the game is Saint Cards, and you can order them at saintcards.com or your local Catholic bookstore. Uh, there's an opportunity for it, families, young people, to, to play the game of Saint Cards, where the, all the colors and the numbers and the symbols all have core information about the saints. So between 15 and 20 facts for each Saint Card, and so what you do is you play it kind of Uno style, where there's an upturned card, and you look in your hand and you try to find combinations. So we're going to have Saint Monica up, and we're going to try to find to see what saints have the most similarities to St. Monica. I have St. Philomena here. So she passed away in the fourth century, just like St. Monica. And she also is from Western Europe, just like St. Monica. And she's also got her feast month in the month of August, just like St. Monica. So that's worth three treasures. So I lay that down and then I gather three treasures for myself and then it's the next play, uh, player's turn. So the person at the end of the game that has the most treasures uh, ends up 
uh, winning, and then they get to gather all the treasures at the table and lay them at the feet of Jesus. So we've got a Jesus card that they can lay the treasures at. So each game lasts 10, 15 minutes. My four-year-old loves it. The adults that we play with love it. And, and even for guys' nights, you can even play a little Texas Hold'em if you wanted to as well. So it's, it's there for the whole family. Well, of course, I have here, ladies, oh, the oh, oh. actual game. And uh, here, you, you want some cards? Here, can I get a St. Anthony? Mm -hmm. Here, here what you got here? here here's, <laughs> you can have some here. Ooh, I just got Cecilia. St. <laughs> Agnes. I love St. Oh, Agnes. Oh, that's mine. I'll and this is St. Agnes. St. Philomena. I have St. Barnabas Bridget. the Apostle. Wow, I've never I'm, heard of this one. I'm in the Apostle oh, deck here. St. Gertrude. St. <laughs> Max Colby. St. Angela Marici. That was the first parish that my husband uh, wow. served at as a deacon. St. Rose, like my mom, Rosie. My mom, Rosie. School there in you go. Right. Yeah. And so, see, if you look ah. at the different numbers, okay, mm -hmm. and colors, they're thematic. Okay. So, like, for example, I have the, the one section, and I have here St. Andrew the Apostle, St. Barnabas the Apostle, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. James, and so on. So these are all the main men, the apostles. And then these blue ones are the gospel evangelists. Okay, so we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, and then there's uh, more obscure saints uh, like Saint Germanicus of Smyrna. There's uh, Saint Pancras of Rome, uh, Saint Edmund the Martyr, uh, and uh, Saint Pelagius of Oviedo. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really a great thing, I think, to kind of get a family sitting around the table and uh, you know, have a, a great card game where you get to learn the names of some of these Here's saints. Here's a saint that I never heard of, and, and for all of us who are in, in media and use our voice, and especially for me because I've had some vocal cord issues, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but the saint's name is Saint Etheldreda. Saint Etheldreda. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And she is, she's a patron saint and to help you with neck and throat ailments. Her, her relics are in, in London. Really? Yes, oh, yes. Wow. we've been in front of her wow. relics, yes. Wow. Yeah. And you sort of described in the, the game, there's, the, there's the Jesus card. Yay, Jesus. Yay, Jesus. And, of course, that's always on the table when the family's playing. And then these are the those little treasures we try to win during the game. And, of course, uh, you know, the treasures will eventually then go to Jesus. This is and so win. fun. And what a great way of, to spend family time together and then right. learn more about these saints. Because, look, I just learned about this new saint I never heard of, Saint Ethel Dreda. Never heard of her. Never heard, and right? And Elena knew about her. Yes, I didn't yes. know about her. I didn't know about her. We're, we're, my, my family, we're all friends with her. Well, there Since you we go. Went, we, we and didn't look know at her. this in my pile, Coinky Dink, I think not, St. Stephen, Deacon, oh, Patron of Deacons. Deacon, oh, Deacon Dom. Yes. <laughs> yep, Lord. there you go. Feast and I had no idea when I just passed places. out the cards. See, that, that was going to happen. Holy Spirit works. <laughs> like, I'm so we you. talk cool. about, you know, families um, having to put their cell phones down, pay attention to each other, shut off the TV. This is just another tool to use. Uh, to kind of get the family together and learn a little bit more about things. How fun. Right? Well, it's the teacher time again. It's okay. time for homework, homework, homework. So, of course, uh, number one, learn more about the Catholic Conferences for Moms. Visit catholicmosaic.com for more information. If you want to know more about this beautiful Saint Card Game, go to Saint Card Game. It's available at saintcards.com. That's saintcards.com. And of course, another suggestion is first thing in the morning, offer all your work as a prayer for that day and name an intention, like we said, before you get out of bed. Number four, of course, go to the CatholicBeforeWomen.com for more information where we also have uh, past episodes and sign up for our e-letter. And of course, like us on Facebook. And of course, the reminder, our Kitchen Madonna available yep. at the EWTN Religious Catalog, which has the beautiful symbolism, like Galena was pointing out, the kettle that nurtures us both in body and soul, the broom that keep our thoughts clean and keep the house clean, <clears throat> the keys that also uh, will keep the house safe, but also the, Mary will give us the keys to the kingdom and get it closer to Jesus. So the Kitchen Madonna available at the EWTN. Catalog. All right, good job, teacher. Appreciate it. And don't okay. forget, all the homework assignments can be found at the Catholic View for women .com. <laughs> Most of all, don't forget, if you don't have time to do your rosary today, of course, we don't want to discourage you from doing the rosary because it's one of the greatest prayers we have. But always remember, as the great St. Teresa Avila said, that God can be found everywhere and anywhere, even in those pots and pans. We'll see you next time on the Catholic View for Women. Thanks for watching.